Aloha. Everybody loves to eat shrimp. In fact, in the U.S., shrimp is the number one seafood. Most of that seafood is imported, like 90% of it, from, and most of that is farm-raised in Asia and South America. What's little known is that the genetics of those farm-raised shrimp all over the world gets their start in Hawaii. And today I want to tell you that story. I was hired by Oceanic Institute in 1984 to manage a large research program with the intention of accelerating development for a U.S. shrimp farming industry. At that time, shrimp was already the number one seafood in the U.S., and shrimp imports were worth about $2 billion. So it was reason that a uh, U.S.-based shrimp industry could offset those import expenses and also create some good jobs in rural America. At that time, shrimp farming was rapidly developing in South America and Asia. At that time, the practice was to capture small baby shrimp from the ocean and bring them into and stock them into land-based ponds. In about six months of time, the shrimp would grow to a market size. The farmers could harvest it, and it was a complete process. The demand for those shrimp at that time was very strong, and the industry was expanding rapidly. However, as the industry tried to expand, they ran into a bottleneck, which was the limited availability of those wild post larvae, the baby shrimp. It turns out that in, back in the 1940s, there was a Japanese scientist, Dr. Fujinaga, who had closed the life cycle of the, sh of the marine shrimp. And that technology then gave way to the development of land-based hatcheries where the shrimp industry could produce the baby shrimp to stock the ponds. With that technology in play, then the industry was poised for rapid expansion. It was at that time that in the industry's development that I went to work at OI, and we were tasked with identifying and solving the problems that were preventing the development of this U.S. Uh, shrimp industry. So we went out and talked to the farmers around the country to find out what their problems were. And a single overwhelming problem emerged in those conversations. All the farmers were having disease problems. And these disease problems started in the hatchery and then went out into the farm and were preventing them from getting reliable production, which would allow this industry to grow. So we looked at other animal production uh, industries like cattle, chickens, uh, pork, and they had solved these disease problems by domesticating their animals and developing disease-free animals. And so we set out to then develop a disease-free shrimp. We called our shrimp SPF, which is an acronym for Specific Pathogen Free, and that reflects the fact that they've gone through an elaborate quarantine and certification process. Our first SPF shrimp were born in Kona in 1990. We first wanted to see whether these SPF shrimp could in fact solve the disease problems that were occurring in the U.S. industry. So we produced enough brood stock in Kona in 1991 and sent them out to the U.S. industry so that representative ponds in all the commercial farms around the country could get stocked with our SPF shrimp to compare how they did with the standard shrimp. Well, the results were fantastic. Faster growth, more uniform size, higher survival, uniformly across all these different systems, all these different farms. So there was a lot of excitement. We then came back to Hawaii and uh, developed another batch of broodstock for the 1992 crop in the U.S. And that year, based on the enthusiasm from 91, the entire U.S. industry was stocked with SPF shrimp. At harvest time in the fall of 92, the results were fantastic. Everybody had increased production, and in fact, the U.S. industry's overall production had doubled over the previous years. This was really fantastic. I went to my boss at OI and told him, this is amazing uh, 
new technology has tremendous commercial potential. We should commercialize this. He said, no, 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 Jim, you don't understand. We're a research company. We don't do commercialization. So I said, okay, I quit. So I quit my job, and with Carol, my partner, my wife and my partner, we started our own company, which is called High Health Aquaculture. We moved the family to Kona and secured a lease at the Natural Energy Lab here in Kaiwoli Point and started our business. Our first endeavor in uh, the commercial venture was a massive disaster. The large, one of the largest companies from Ecuador called El Rosario had read about our fantastic results with SPF shrimp in the United States and they wanted to introduce that technology into their industry in Ecuador. And at that time, Ecuador was the leading supplier of shrimp in the Western Hemisphere. So they invested in our company and we uh, worked in 1993 to do a production trial in Ecuador in their ponds. We sent brood stock down there and uh, they ended up producing 500 million post larvae of SPF shrimp which got stocked out into five different farms for El Rosario. So the hatchery stage, everything went smooth. First couple weeks of raw, fantastic. I was at an uh, aquaculture conference in Europe at the time and I got a late night phone call. I said, Jim, you've got to come to Ecuador. I said, what's wrong? The shrimp are dying. Oh my God. So, got on the next plane, flew to Ecuador. By the time I arrived in Ecuador, massive mortalities in our ponds, in the SPF ponds. So, that killed my investors' interest in this concept, but only increased my determination. We continued to supply brood stock to the U.S. industry, which was going very well, and continued to do that so our business survived. In 1998, uh, company from Taiwan imported the first SPF broodstock to Asia. They had fantastic results, increased production and so forth. So what happened was a boom occurred in Taiwan because of this early success. And literally, at the time we were doing business using a fax machine, our fax would be flooded with requests for the broodstock. Taiwanese entrepreneurs would come to Hawaii to secure their supply. 1999, the story about the SPF shrimp in Taiwan made the front page of the Taiwan national newspaper. The success in Taiwan then quickly spread to China, Thailand, Indonesia, Vietnam, and Asia was off to the races with SPF shrimp. The economic impact of that uh, transfer Sorry, the economic impact of that transfer is illustrated here. These are the annual production numbers for the industry. And what's important is that in 99, when we started uh, shipping broodstock to Asia, total world production at that time was about 800,000 tons. By 2010, it was up to 3.5 million metric tons, more than fourfold increase in a dozen years as a direct result of the introduction of this technology into Asia. So it was very, very, that was very successful. But one of the problems that had occurred during this time was that that nasty virus that, that killed our shrimp in Ecuador was called Taurus syndrome virus. And over time, it sort of marched its way up through Central America and finally reached Texas which was the main area of the U.S. shrimp industry and devastated the farms there. And so something needed to be done. And my customers in Texas were saying, Jim, can't you develop a, a virus-resistant shrimp? And you know, I talked to a lot of geneticists and disease experts and they're all saying, no, it can't be done, that's impossible, forget it. But I'm kind of bullheaded, so I said, I think we can, let's try. So we tried. So how we would do this, it's called a family-based breeding program. We'd make a lot of families that were the same age, all spawned on the same day. And then we would grow them in separate tanks until they're about one gram size, like this. And then samples from each family, we would take the samples and inject them with this liquid plastic 
that was color coded. So each family got their own special color or a combination of colors. So that when we mixed them all together, we, could, we would know which family they came from. Okay? So then the tag shrimp, we would put them together and we shipped them up to University of Arizona to Dr. Don Leitner's lab where he would conduct a, t a virus challenge study. Basically, he would take our tag shrimp and divide them into two separate identical groups. One group would be fed the virus directly. The other group would be maintained as a control. Then they would monitor the health and survival of the animals over about three weeks, compile the data based on the family performance, send us the data. From these data, then, we, we knew which families were the most resistant to the virus. And those could then be used to breed the next generation of shrimp, right? So we're doing a family-based selection program. And lo and behold, we had amazing results. Generation over generation, the survival of the average survival of our shrimp increased like stair steps. So these are like, in the beginning, our shrimp would get like 20% survival when they were challenged with the virus. And then after one generation, it was already up to 50% and so forth, marching through. By the time we had completed eight generations of selection, we were up at 95% survival. So this was really successful. Then the other thing we did is we'd select within a group, within a family that was selected, we would pick out the fastest growing individuals to select them for growth rate. Okay, so we were doing a combined selection program, fast growth, virus resistance. We started supplying our virus resistant shrimp to the uh, US industry in 1999, and over the next four years, US shrimp production tripled, went from 2,000 to 6,000 metric tons using our broodstock exclusively. So, uh, SPF shrimp is the basis, the foundation of sustainable shrimp farming. SPF shrimp stops the spread of disease, it increases the survival of the animals, it, because of these two things then the farmers aren't using antibiotics to treat their shrimp, which is a, a very good thing, and it's also eliminated the process of catching wild animals, taking wild animals out of the ocean for this aquaculture process. Now the industry just uses these domesticated animals. So what do we know? Hawaii is the home and the foundation for the SBF breeding technology. Hawaii is also the lead, world's leading supplier of SBF broodstock. Here's a graph of annual exports of the broodstock industry. And here in 2013, they produced 425,000, they exported 425,000 broodstock. These are worth $100 per pair. So that's two shrimp, $100. Okay, so these exports, 425,000 are more than $20 million in value. Okay, so in 2012, we sold our company in Kona to an Asian multinational, actually the biggest shrimp company in the world. In 2013, we saw this tremendous growth in production and uh, sales. And the company that bought our business have greatly expanded on it down in Kona. And now Kona is the leading supplier of SPF shrimp to the world. So, Hawaii is the leading supplier of SPF, SPF broodstock. Hawaii is the basis and technology for this for this uh, industry, the SPF technology. So truly, Hawaii has earned the title, the world shrimp breeding capital.